Vibration is one of the biggest enemies to the crafts that we fly. It's the reason why many of our crafts fly inconsistently. We don't know why one craft flies well and another one doesn't, or why something might burn. Vibrations come from the motors and props spinning, which is, seems pretty obvious, but more recently people think it comes from the flight controller or the frame or something else. Sure, those things can resonate, but resonance and vibrations are very different. We've known now for a very long time that if we can figure out how to hardware dampen vibrations, we could achieve more consistent flight performance and potentially better flight performance as well. Basically a clean and dirty setup, which is something that we've been doing since the inception of multi-rotors because we've known that we've had to deal with these vibrations. I'm going to skip everything in the past and tell you a little bit of information about the things that I've worked on. Um, there is some discussion about how some particular frame designs, arm structures are potentially better at managing vibrations than others. I've tested namely the alien arm design and variations of it up and down, left and right, and can't really find a way to recreate it consistently. I can recreate it, but if you build a couple of different builds, it's not quite the same. And that's the trick is finding something that's consistent and is repeatable. Additionally, I've taken frames and I've doubled and tripled up the arms to try and see if arm rigidity or stiffness is actually going to improve the vibration profile and if there is resonance or issues coming from the arms themselves. There is some improvement sometimes. And again, that's a dilemma. I've gone from four millimeter to six millimeter to eight millimeter, double stacked four millimeter, double stacked five millimeter, double stacked six, six millimeter arms. And I found no consistent improvement anywhere, not even like a, a limit to where the, the improvement or anything happened. Like there was no hard limit where, okay, well, it didn't get better as I added more. It was actually getting worse a lot of the time. So there is no easy way to figure this out. And a lot of people have tried to come at this with finite element analysis, simulations, math, and whatnot. That is helpful here and there, but at the same time, designs like this that have struts or structural design, like structural elements of the arms that help with one particular mode, which is the twisting mode of vibrations, they can only do so much. Again, this is a battle of just adding stuff to the frame design to try and manage various types of vibrations versus just lowering the entire noise floor across the board. It does not matter what frequency you're trying, you're, you actually end up dampening. Any noise floor reduction is helpful. Now, the next thing a lot of people will say is if you have some sort of damping system on board, it's actually going to delay the movements and you're going to get oscillations here and there. Yeah, that is true. Definitely. And I did experience that my, myself, but we need to really figure out something in order to move forward. And the trick is finding durable vibration damping. And what I mean by that is that we often want to put something between the carbon plates and then cinch it down with some bolts which is negating the whole point of putting whatever we did between the plates. So we need the actual damping mechanism to be what holds things together. And the problem is that if you crash, the damping mechanism will most likely rip because it's got to be softer than carbon. It's got to be less durable to be able to do its job. And that is to just generate heat from vibrations. Let's take a look at this design. This particular setup, as in the, these components, this exact components, I keep transferring from frame to frame because I, I like keeping things very, very consistent. And it's really the best way in my experience to just test frames out and see how what I'm trying to do actually works because I'm not changing the, the motors, the flight controller, anything. They're all exactly the same components. They're not even taken apart. They're just plopped from one frame to another. So this frame just would not fly right. And this is the consistency issue that I often run into because I build so many designs. And if you if you have the experience of building tons of frames, you'll notice that even if you build the same thing five times over, you'll get three quads that fly the same and two quads that just don't. And you don't really know why. And possibly one that just doesn't even fly right and you don't even want to fly it. And so this was one of those crafts is that it just would not work. And I was fed up with trying to tune it or deal with deal with uh, filters and whatnot. So I just grabbed some of these rubber bobbins and I just threw it in there just to see what would happen. I did not want it to work. I honestly hope that it did not work and I wasn't expecting it to work. But when I flew it, I could not believe that it was it was working. It was flying fine. 
Now, it wasn't perfect. Of course, I was getting those oscillations in a certain range of the throttle, which wasn't going to work out, but the rest of the throttle range was working beautifully, and even my video quality improved, which I did not expect at all. So this told me that, you know, the clean and dirty concept of yesteryear really is unfortunate that it works. It needs to come back. We need to figure something out. It's just really tough to do so. So I had this bright idea to use steel cables like is often used in videography, and it's a well-known method. And the reason why steel cables are good is because as they move and bend, they have multiple fibers, and the fibers will all rub up against each other and generate heat. And that's what the damping action is, is the generation of heat. So I had this wacky idea to hover, to, to suspend the body of the frame on the arms with steel cables. And the idea was that I could use different steel cable thicknesses or even add multiple small cables to get the damping properties that I need for the given build. And while this was an interesting idea and somebody even recommended or somebody I talked to recommended, I call it the Mr. Steel frame. It was just a uh, concept and it was just something I was testing. And not surprisingly, it didn't work out. Well, it did kind of if I spent the time to actually figure it out. But that's the problem is the time that I just have no interest in spending. I need it to work or at least show promise right off the bat in order to continue moving in that direction. And so not only was that annoying, the build was also annoying. Just getting it to be aligned on top of the arms is just frustrating. It's not, it's just not going to work out. So I went hunting and I found actually these vibration isolation mounts that are 10 by 10. They're 10 millimeters diameter and 10 millimeters tall. And they're so they're a bit thicker than the 8 millimeter by 8 millimeter mounts that were often used for vibration damping of flight controllers way back when. So I um, picked some up and I designed a frame to try and manage those oscillations that were so terrible. And I went through a couple designs in 3D before I landed on one that I thought might actually be good and not be too much of a pain to, act to build, to put together. And uh, this design, the concept or the idea is to move the weight between the props as much as possible to put it right between, give it like, give the props a really 90 degree torque lever to the, to the fulcrum of weight in the middle, to the center of the mass, as well as widen the stance of the dampers so that any kinds of oscillation will at least be very wide. Like as in, it would take more oscillating to oscillate a wider mass or it would have to be a lower frequency or whatever. You basically understand what I'm trying to say. Widen the stance, so there's less chance of things oscillating around or moving and more of a chance of there being vibrations that get dampened. So before talking about the results of this, let's look at this other design because I, I designed the same concept into a Cinewhoop and I had less uh, expectations for this to work out because I um, was planning on both designs mounting the flight controller to the dampened plate, which is where the camera and the battery rests. And I wanted to put everything in between the uh, dampers and the main body of the Cinewhoop. And I did do that, and I expected it to work out. And uh, what ended up happening was that it actually worked remarkably well. But I think it might be for another reason. And I'll talk about that after I talk about the 5-inch design, which <clears throat> did not work at all. There was plenty of oscillations and uh, plenty of issues. And in this design, I also mounted the flight controller to the top plate. However, looking at both the Cinewhoop and this five inch frame design when using just standoffs and not the vibration mounts, the, the vibration profile was considerably lower than I was expecting. So I thought maybe there's a couple things going on here. It's possible that the straight arms of the Cinewhoop were actually helping something to not vibrate. Or it's possible that we don't actually need damping. We just need to strap the flight controller to the main mass of the frame, mass of the, of the thing flying, which is the battery and the camera, that plate that those things are on. So it's possible that the frame itself is doing enough damping to manage that. And the goal here is to only reduce the noise floor. Again, we have no interest in eliminating vibration. That's not going to happen. We're, ne we're never going to find something that does that. We just want to make it better. Just get like 20% damping so that the code, the, the filters can actually figure out what they need to do a lot easier. And you could potentially reduce your filters and whatnot. But more importantly, it gives you very consistent flight performance and a craft that is very tunable. And those are the goals that we're trying to achieve. Sure, you can try to reduce your filters, turn them off. 
but really that's 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 a different discussion entirely yes the same sorts of of uh solutions will lead to that but we're looking for consistency and just workability and maintenance that's that's the core thing that i'm after because that's where i'm finding that there's a lot more issues so the cinewhoop with the vibration mounts actually worked out really well i'm seeing the same noise profile just less and when you look at the waterfall kind of chart you can also see that it's much easier to think to point out the actual vibrations you can actually see a line and that is probably what the flight code is seeing as well which is making it a lot easier for it to figure out what to do with the vibrations and i'm not seeing any added oscillations i'm not seeing any added issues and i also tested it with the 8x8 mounts as well and i found that the larger ones were about the same maybe a little bit better but about the same but more importantly the larger ones they don't break i i can't rip them apart with two pliers like it's very hard i can do it but it's it's very hard so the good news is that it's absolutely durable enough for a cinewhoop definitely and this structure with the straight arms i don't know if that's leading to any improvement in vibration management but i'm going to test that in the five inch because the next time around and what i've designed now is something that looks like it's from 2010 it's a straight h frame it's nothing special and i'm not expecting it to be amazing but I will test it and see what I get. The most important thing about this design is that I have mounting points all over the thing for the flight controller. So I'm gonna be testing this with the flight controller mounted to the top plate, to the bottom plate, to the middle, to the back, all over the place to see what I find. So I'll see if moving the flight controller around is gonna make any difference at all. And it might be so that if the flight controller is closer to the prop line, to kind of like the fulcrum of rotation, that might actually improve vibrations. We don't know. Maybe it'll improve the amplitude of the vibrations, and that's why I'm seeing just reduced overall noise. This is also only on two frames, so it's not like a huge sample size of frames. But still, it's weird for me to see this consistency when the flight controller, I think, I'm guessing, my, my postulating that I think it's because the flight controller is strapped to the top plate. And if it's as simple as just doing that, well, that's easy. Lots of frames can already do that. We don't have to do anything. Just drill a couple holes and mount your flight controller to the top plate or just stick it up there. So the other things that I want to point out about this design is that it's interesting that our frame designs for 5-inch are now well past 120 grams. Most of them that are out there, they're, they're like 120, 130 grams, especially if they have any kind of vibration management design built into them, they're starting to get really chunky. And realistically, the ideal flying weight for a five inch is 580 grams, but that's just not happening with today's GoPros that are just so much heavier. But a frame that is under 100 grams would be massively appreciated. And this H frame, because of how much shorter the arms are and how much less hardware there is, it's only 93 grams built that's the estimated weight with the hardware and everything so it's pretty surprising that it's that much weight savings <laughs> so uh, i'm gonna give it a shot and i'm and i'm i'm gonna see if it works out um there's more to be said about the staggered arms and whatnot as well but let's see if it works out first so that's all for now i'm gonna try to make more videos that are um just shorter and lower production value because i just really don't have the time i just do so much work for each video but i just don't present it because it just takes too much time there's also a lot of other things that i haven't talked about that have been already been insane like we've already been selling motors with this this update and this stuff and it's just i'm so bad at updating anybody but um i'll talk about them pretty soon floss your teeth please take care bye